Hello and welcome everybody. It is the Seahawk Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle. I'm your host, Mike Vaccaro. Glad to have you with us here. Our first edition and a lot to get to as we bring in Takeo Siddle, head coach of the Seahawks. And uh, coach, uh, again, mid-March you get the job here and then pandemic hits. Getting ready for a season like this, what has it been like for you, your staff, your kids as well? It's been a challenge, Mike. You know, as um, soon as we got the job, we wanted to get on the phone with our guys and start building that relationship and laying the foundation. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job with that. And then, you know, within the job, you got to work on the schedule and uh, do some other things. But it's been challenging, but it's been, been a lot of fun. I know you had one schedule in place. You kind of had to scrap that, put some other things in place. But you get three games in last week in Asheville, a big plus just to be playing those three games. Absolutely. You know, to be able to uh, suit up against another opponent, um, you know, at some point during the preseason, it's always um, you can tell that your team is ready to play against somebody new. And uh, we were getting to that point. So to be able to get three games in last week was, uh, was good. Well, let's talk about that first game, Western Carolina in Asheville, Kibble Arena neutral site game there. You knew going in you were going to be a little short-handed, but your thoughts on your kids and you getting ready for that game with the Catamounts? Yeah, you know, I thought that we, uh, we did a good job preparing for them, uh, but I thought when we actually got in the game, uh, we forgot a lot of things that we were working on. And I thought we played about 15 good minutes in that game. And um, we didn't follow scouting report like we needed to, but I thought it was good for a lot of reasons. I thought it was a, a big learning lesson for us and we were able to regroup and uh, take care of business to finish up the tournament. And you look at some of the bright spots coming out of that game, certainly Jalen Sims, one of those. He had a big game, and, and you really liked his effort. You know, put aside the points, but you liked the way he played out there and the energy that he had on the floor. Yeah, he brought a level of toughness that we needed um, throughout the whole weekend. And, uh, you know, I thought he did some really good things on the offensive end. Uh, defensively, I thought he took a step forward. Uh, and in the leadership department, I thought he took a step forward. So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with Jalen right now. Well, again, it was UNCW Western Carolina from Asheville. Let's take a look now at the highlights from last week. We're tipping off the seasons for Western Carolina, UNC Wilmington, and we're underway this upcoming week. Drive inside, room to operate, and a nice big roll off the window. Harvey. He'll spot up the triple, rattles it in. Jalen Sims from downtown. He was on the screen now, right to the far side. Sims thought about the triple, now takes it. And in and out, and right back in again. The iron will be two free throws, Western Carolina the rest of the way. Gaston, the three. That's good. Stays with the Seahawks. Gaston in traffic, through contact, lays it up and in. Five, five. Up the triple and knocks it down. That's great. Crazy. Very aggressive. Not being scared at all by the Gaston, Okoru, Fox, Kirby, all with two fouls, and Jenkins with three. This ball, and here comes Sims. He is electric in half number one, picking up where he left off. His point. Outside, Boggs banks it home. Thought about the jumper instead. Reward the big fella. Great. The defense is staying on one end. Uh, play Matt Harper's in there. Rainbowed in off the window. Floater the other way. Gadsden equally is impressive. Couple of good. Butler well off the mark here. Ricaro. Look and one. Western Carolina is four and two in the prior six. Back and forth. Butler just three rebounds away. It's a quick way in for Zip. Three ball. Good. He's got 31. That's his 30 right there. Well, once again, tough setback for the Seahawks, 98-76 as they fall short in their first game against Western Carolina this season. But Coach, some good things I thought came out of this. We talked about Jalen Sims, but you guys are aggressive against the Catamounts. Drove to the basket, 22 free throws, uh, 22 of 31 in this game against Western Carolina. Yeah, we wanted to be aggressive. That's always part of our attack offensively is being aggressive and uh, getting paint touches. We were able to get to the foul line. I thought we left a couple at the rim. Uh, that we could have finished, but we did a really good job getting to the foul line. 
And Jalen Sims, 27 points in this game, 17 for Jake Boggs. Big game for him, showed his athleticism, and 13 for Ty Gaston as well. Nine players play for the Seahawks. Again, the first game of the season, a setback against Western Carolina. Well, that would be the setback, but after that, the Seahawks made the adjustments. We'll take a break here when we get back. We'll talk about UNCW, UNC Asheville meeting up in Kimmel Arena coming up next. Stay with us. Time to start it up, America. You've got a lot of joy to make. And we're kicking off the Ford Built for the Holidays sales event because you've got turkeys to fry and thanks to give. To help you do it right, we're giving you 90 days payment deferment and 1,000 trade assist cash on the Built Ford Tough F-150 and Ford Ranger. That's on top of what your eligible trade is worth. That'll make a lot of joy this season. Now get F-150 with up to 11,000 in total savings, including 1,000 trade assist on top of your eligible trade-in, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Did you wake up craving a made-from-scratch biscuit topped with tender prime rib and a fried egg? How about now? The new prime rib and fried egg biscuit at Hardee's. Feed your happy. You can't know someone has COVID-19 just by looking at them. But you should know that everyone who wears a mask has a reason to fight it. Whatever your reason, get behind the mask. coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Well, again, UNCW coming off the setback. They had Thanksgiving, a day to prepare for this next game, Coach, UNC Asheville. And again, the biggest thing was you guys made the improvement. What was the biggest thing in your mind that changed from game one to game two? Well, it was a few things. Uh, like I mentioned before, following scouting report, uh, knowing the game plan and actually executing it. And then I thought, uh, I thought we needed to play harder and tougher. And I thought we made those adjustments going into the UNC Asheville game. Yeah, you finished around the rim. You continued to get to the free throw line as well. And it wasn't just Sims. It was other guys getting it done as well. Yeah, we knew we could um, space them out and drive them and, and get some paint touches. And that's what we wanted to do by being aggressive off the bounce. And uh, our guys did a really good job of getting to the paint and making plays. And, and you showed that you're resilient. You were down 10, 9.08 to go in this game. Your kids came back. To have that kind of finish early on, that's got to be a big plus for this team. Absolutely. I think uh, to be able to get over that hurdle, um, you know, I thought in the Western Carolina game we had faced some same, the same adversity uh, and it, we didn't respond the way I wanted us to. And to be able to go into the UNC Asheville game and get over that hump, I thought it was a big step forward for our program. Well, again, UNCW, UNC Asheville, the first game for the Seahawks in the Mako Medical Asheville Classic inside Kimmel Arena. Let's take a look at the highlights. Two on one break the alley. You dunk at the other end. Dunk. Dunk 
indeed. Oh, yeah. Pushing the ball quickly front court. Cole free. Driving on Lawson. Up under. Whoa, how did he get that to go? I have no idea. Oh. Okaru driving the lane. Drops it off for Boggs. Boggs spinning. Nice touch under the rim. Terrible. Closes up. Boggs has it. Three-pointer on the way. Boggs step back. Oh, he's going to knock that down. This is going to be a very... From Boggs, and it's a two point Seahawks lead. Okaru with the ball into the corner. Gets just enough space. My goodness, what a jab step from Gadsden to knock down the three. Well, the final score, UNCW again comes from behind 76 68. The final score, the Seahawks down 10 with 9.08 to go in this game. Jalen Sims. Another big game with 24, Boggs 19, Okaru. Coach, he didn't shoot the ball great, but he got to the free throw line, finishes with a double-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds. So you've got some guys, some talent certainly on this team. Absolutely. When you talk about Mike, he didn't have a great game, uh, and he knows that. But what he did is what upperclassmen and seniors do. He stepped up in the crunch time and made his free throws and grabbed some huge rebounds. Uh, so I thought that was good for our team. And, and you thought, I mean, you – Played six guys, 20 plus minutes, but everybody in your mind came in, did their job, did something positive for this team. That's what it's about. Um, you know, everybody coming in and embracing their role, uh, whether it's, it's different from game to game. Um, you know, I thought guys came in and made contributions to us winning the game. 34 rebounds, you and Asheville both with 34, and it was the guards really that got it done. What does that tell you about your team and, and the guard play hitting the glass? Well, I thought, you know, uh, it was a lot of threes being taken on their end, and, and we talked about going into the, uh, talked about that going into the game. Uh, it's going to be a lot of rebounds around the three-point line and the free throw line. Uh, so we wanted to get all those 50-50 balls, and uh, we definitely did a good job of that. And your first win as a head coach as well. I know it's not about you, but it's got to be special to get that win in the come from behind fashion like this was? It was special for a lot of reasons. You know, um, for those guys to, to be able to go in there and respond to adversity uh, and for us to actually go in there and do it together as a team and have a team win like that, I thought it was really special. Well, it was the first win of the season. Wouldn't be the last. UNCW coming up against Troy when we get back. Stay with us. We'll have the highlights of the Seahawks and the Trojans next. They should be here by now. There's only one other place they could be. Where are the Bud Light Platinums? Oh, you're looking for the party turret. This here is the stirring into the void turret. Completely different turrets. Oh, it's the wrong roof to top. You only have two turrets. Unbelievable. Bud Light Platinum, brewed for the night. Keep your eyes on the Monster Angus Thickburger. With sizzling bacon and two one-third pound Angus beef patties. The monster is your daddy now. <laughs> the monster Angus Thick Burger at Hardee's. Feed your happy. You can't know someone has COVID-19 just by looking at them. But you should know that everyone who wears a mask has a reason to fight it. Whatever your reason, get behind the mask. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. 
UNCW wrapped up their trip to Asheville with a game against Troy University on the Sunbelt Conference, the final game of the Mako Medical Asheville Classic for UNCW. And Coach, you know, you come off the come from behind win. You had to see a lot of confidence in the eyes of your kids going into this game with Troy. We came out with a lot of confidence, like you said, from the jump. And uh, my message to them before the game was, the team that wants it more is going to win the game. And, and I thought we did a good job for about 35 solid minutes of, uh, you know, wanting it more than they did. We came out with great energy. We finished with great energy. The game before, you didn't like how many threes your kids took, but in this game, boy, they were open and they were dropping early. A different game plan. Uh, we knew we would be able to get spray out threes, um, just stepping up and taking those and knocking them down with confidence. Um, and, we, and we absolutely did that. I talked earlier to somebody that, you know, you could be a team that has a style, you don't veer from that. But you guys certainly, you know, change your style a little bit depending on the opponent. And that was certainly evident in this game. Yeah, I think the style remains the same. Uh, but the mentality um, and, and, you know, the scouting report changes. So we just have to make adjustments from game to game. And that's what it's all about. Well, UNCW again jumped on Troy early in this game, hit a lot of threes. They win it by 23 points here to win this championship. Let's take a look now at the highlights from Asheville, UNCW, and Troy. Ready to get the regular man to man defense all of a sudden. Women can just, I mean, uh, Troy can just spring up. I didn't want to be here. I didn't choose to be here. Let's look at it. Oh, big threes and seven. Gaston wide open to three, flashes it down. Big three for Gaston. Jay Williams got a hand on it, but Morales then knocks down another three. He's got eight. Bodies on the floor. Here comes Wilmington. Three on two break. Kicks it out. Sada Bokaru hits it. That's what Wilmington does. Especially when I couldn't have had it, lost it. Crossover three pointer. Oh my goodness. Cannot miss. Gaston knocks it down. Bokaru takes a sense of three. Haru knocks it down, his second three-pointer. Down the screen, Sims. That's way too much daylight. Down the screen, the lane. Gadsden, oh my goodness, quick release, and he knocks down the three. Keep that energy up, because you could go down at certain times, especially when you're playing against teams that are very similar to you. What a move by the end. Dodd gets it. Oh, nice spin move to the baseline for two. Nothing. Sims, oh, what a move. Driving, foul, bucket, he'll go to the line to shoot one. Garu, the crossover in the lane. One, three, flash. Sims with a three. Three corner to Gilliam. Sims will take it. He's got 50. I think that kind of play has a lot more impactful against the UNC after Bulldogs. He didn't really play much there in the line. Well, you see the final score there. Impressive 23 point win. 73 to 50, your final score. We talked about the threes, 12 of 23. Coach, we didn't talk about the defense, and that was equally as good. You hold them under 30%, only 50 points in this game. You got to be very pleased to see the defensive effort by the Seahawks. Very pleased with the effort on the defensive end. You know, we wanted to go into the game. Uh, we talk about getting five to seven kills, which is three straight stops, and we got eight. And, um, you know, I think that's something that we can hang our hat on and build on. Um, you know, our guys did a really good job of keeping the ball in front and, you know, making them take jump shots. And we did a great job rebounding. You look at offensively, 29 points from Jalen Sims, a career high for him after he set a new one earlier in the week. 18 points for Gadsden, Michael Caru 12. And again, you didn't have Jake Boggs in this game, played three minutes, had had the shoulder injury. So to see some of these other guys step up, that's got to be nice because Boggs was having a really good uh, couple of games there in Asheville. Yeah, that's what it's all about, you know, next man up. Um, I thought Amaje came in and did a really good job with his energy on the glass. Uh, his defense was great. And then I thought John stepped in and, and played some really good minutes. Uh, defensively, he rebounded. Uh, he guarded on the perimeter. Um, he did some good things on the offensive end. So I'm very pleased with those guys. So you go two and one in Asheville again. You get the three games in that were on your schedule. Not everybody can say that early on here in college basketball. But your big takeaway, the start that you had, and then the next step now for this team. Yeah, you know, um, I thought we responded to adversity like we talked about from game one to game two. And then in game three, I thought we played, um, you know, 35 good minutes. Um, so it's a lot that we, we can build on from there. You know, they, they showed me a lot on both ends of the floor. They showed me a lot as a team. 
Um, moving forward, you know, some things we need to clean up. Uh, and we know that that's part of our process is, is watching it and going out and working on it. So um, that's, that'll be our focus moving forward, getting better in some areas that we need to get better in and getting ready for next week. Yeah, next week will be East Carolina. We'll take a break here. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But when we get back, we'll have our play of the week and our player of the week as well. Stay with us. It's the Seahawk Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle. Even though we can't have everyone gathered, we found new ways to make each occasion special. We're keeping your gifting experience both safe and personal through Reads.com, answering all your questions and guiding you to the perfect present, just like we have for over 70 years. Family always finds a way to celebrate life's moments together, no matter what. You won't just shop with confidence at Reads Jewelers and Reads.com. You'll feel like family. to start it up America you've got a lot of joy to make and we're kicking off the Ford built for the holidays sales event because you've got turkeys to fry and thanks to give to help you do it right we're giving you 90 days payment deferment and 1,000 trade assist cash on the built Ford top f-150 and Ford Ranger that's on top of what your eligible trade is worth that'll make a lot of joy this season now get f-150 with up to 11,000 in total savings including a thousand trade assist on top of your eligible trade-in only at your Carolina Ford dealer Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Bring you back. Time now for this week's Play of the Week. We go back to last week, and it's a freshman to a sophomore creating a nice highlight here. Here is our Play of the Week. Every place on the goal. Harvey floating it up. Big dunk from Boggs, and it's a two-point Seahawks lead. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a read by Gadsden. Absolutely. He knew that Bob had to run against the post player and just kept through it up there. Again, that's our player of the week as uh, Bog showing his athleticism there in the alley-oop dunk against uh, Asheville. Well, Coach, time now for our Carolina Ford Dealers Player of the Week. And uh, no contest here. Jalen Sims, outstanding play for him through three games, averaging almost 27 points. Uh, I mean, you look at the points, you look at his play. What impressed you the most as his head coach? That he did it within our system. Um, you know, he, he played extremely hard. Um, he played within the system. Uh, and he did it in so many different ways. In transition, he did it in a half court from three. He did it from uh, getting to the rim. He did it by getting to the free throw line. He did it in a lot of different ways. And if you're going to be a big time scorer, you have to be able to do it in different ways. And um, very pleased with him. What a special talent he is. Yeah, he is this week's CAA Player of the Week as well. A near 30-10 game for him as he had 29 points and 9 rebounds against Troy as well. And he had the ball in his hands as the point guard position because you're a little understaffed in that position as well. But he looked pretty solid taking care of the basketball. Yeah, and I trust him playing the point for us, and he's going to have to do that. Even when we do get our full roster back, I still want to play him at some point guard position because I think with his size and his ability to make plays, uh, it can only help us. Yeah, Jalen Sims early on, totally different player toward the end of last year. Really had some struggles, but not so far out of the gates here this season. He is this week's Carolina Ford Dealers Player of the Week, and once again, the conference's Player of the Week as well. We'll take our final break. When we get back, we'll look ahead. Just one game on the docket for UNCW we'll talk about next, and that is the rival, East Carolina. Stay with us. More to come. Okay. Whoa. She's the one, and you know it. 
At reads.com, we're making it easy to find the perfect ring from home. With helpful advice from our online jewelry experts, safe and discreet shipping, and beautiful ring packaging, you'll be confident the moment will be as perfect for her as she is for you. As a trusted jeweler for over 70 years, Reed's Jewelers will be here to make both of you feel like family. Long after she says yes. I feel like they should be here by now. There's only one other place they could be. Where are the Bud Light Platinums? Oh, you're looking for the party turret. This here is the stern into the void turret. Completely different turrets. Oh, it's the wrong roof to top. We only have two turrets. Unbelievable. Bud Light Platinum, brewed for the night. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. Well, we're bringing back here just one game to look at this week's schedule delivered by Papa John's. It is a Monday meeting with East Carolina. And, Coach, they weren't on the schedule last year, but you saw it important to bring this game back. It's a rivalry, especially the older Seahawks fans. They know how big of a rivalry is. Why was it important for you? Because, like you said, I think it's a, a huge game for our fans, um, both our fans and their fans. Uh, it's one of those games where, um, you know, everybody's going to get up for it. And so what I'll do, I'll spend some time talking to my guys about the uh, importance of this rivalry and, um, you know, the record in this rivalry. And we'll talk about that and uh, dive into it and what it means to um, wear a UNCW jersey playing against East Carolina and um, the type of effort that we're going to need to have. You look at East Carolina, it's a veteran team. Gardner, the big guy, coming back preseason all-conference uh, in the American Athletic Conference. So your thoughts on them and what it's going to take against the Pirates? It's a veteran team. They returned five starters from last year's team. They were preseason pick number nine in their league. Uh, Well-coached team. Uh, so I think it'll be a, it'll be a challenge for us. Um, just like going into the Troy game, I thought it was a speed versus power game. I think it'll be the same thing going down there. They're bigger than us. Uh, I think we're faster than them. Uh, so can we impose our will on them? Exam break going on, so you've got the kids, no games, but some practice. What's the, the big thing you're working on getting ready for the Pirates? Right now, what we're doing these uh, next couple days is we're working on ourselves, getting better. And then, um, you know, moving forward, probably starting Saturday, we'll start diving into their personnel and our game plan against them. Uh, I think it's going to take a high level of toughness. Uh, I think we're going to have to be extremely physical. And I think, like I said before, we have to impose our will on them. Our pressure has to really be effective in that game. Well, excited about that game. Again, that's Monday night. We'll have it for you on 95.9 The Breeze as well. Coach, we'll talk to you from Greenville. Best of luck. Thanks, Mike. He's to K.O. Siddle. I'm Mike Vicaro. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week for another edition of the Seahawk Basketball Show featuring to K.O. Siddle.